Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake. In a recent Instagram story, I asked for you guys to leave a bunch of questions regarding the setup, any hardware related questions you had, and I got tons of questions. So today we're gonna to be answering a lot of those questions here in this video. And before we get started, I wanna mention we are running a 35% off special on the Freelance Colorist Masterclass starting August 11th, running until August 18th. The Masterclass features 10 modules with over 27 hours of content, and we're constantly adding to it. With FCM, you also get access to a private Facebook community where we hold weekly competitions and get tailor-made feedback on your entries. You actually have the opportunity to make money because at the end of every season we have cash prizes of up to $1,600. You also get complete access to 100 gigabytes of professionally shot footage for you to practice with and to top it all off is a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have absolutely nothing to lose. Again that window to join is August 11th to August 18th so do not miss out on that and guys if you're enjoying the content be sure to smash that like button subscribe to the channel for more awesome content follow us on Instagram and let's roll the intro. We're trying a 24 millimeter lens today. Usually I'm shooting on the 35, but this is 24, this is wider. This is like a 12 year old lens that I haven't used in forever, but today's a more casual video, less, well, it is less scripted. I mean, this is just kind of off the cuff, but what I'm gonna be doing today, I've got a Instagram story that I posted yesterday. In that Instagram story, I asked you guys what questions you had about my studio setup um, or studio setups in general for color grading, mostly specific to color grading, um, but also just video editing in general. So today we're answering that. We're gonna be covering a lot of different topics and I'm just gonna be scrolling through all the answers from the Instagram story that I posted. Um, or all the questions rather, and we'll be answering them one by one. And then if I think it needs an additional, you know, shot or B-roll to explain or put some visual imagery on top of what I'm saying, we're gonna do that. But this is gonna be like a laid back, kind of like, almost like a live Q&A, but it's not live, I'm alone. So I'm just gonna go down to the bottom. First question, uh, is that the Carl B 74 or 98 Ikea desk? It is neither, it's a kitchen countertop because they told me they discontinued the Carl B. Uh, they did not, so this is, I think it starts with a P but I think it's in their kitchen countertop. Question number two, what is your mic setup and is that your audio source for all your tutorials? Yes, I actually just recently upgraded. I know it's an Audio-Technica, but I've kind of forgotten uh, which model. So let me check real quick, see my recent order. So yes, that is an Audio-Technica 2035, AT2035, um, and it's being run into an M-Audio M-Track Duo, which is a fairly affordable, like super budget option. I think the whole thing, I was deciding between this and the Shure SM7B. I went with this one, and it's also great for like client remote sessions. Um, Cause it's just a huge step above your basic computer microphone. And of course the audio interface makes it super easy one to monitor anything. So you don't have to have worry about any reverb or uh, feedback, sorry. And of course you can control the dials like right then and there. It's super easy just to make adjustments to your levels. So you're not blowing out anybody's speakers. You know, I'm just, I'm sorry for poor framing today. We're just, we're making it work. This was probably the most asked question. What monitor does, what, what monitors are those? What are those? The monitors are the Flanders or FSI DM240, which is a 1080p SDR monitor, not HDR. But the thing about you know going with a brand like FSI, they are specifically built for onset uh, and post-production color grading. So they're calibrating these monitors with $30,000 spectrometers. And then you can also send it back to them once a year. I think you just have to cover the UPS shipping or FedEx, whichever one they use. Um, they take it back, they calibrate it, and then they send it back to you. So it's a pretty excellent um, value. This one I believe runs at around $4,000. They should be adding on to their lineup pretty soon, especially in this just smaller 24 inch SDR world. Um, but I, I will probably upgrade soon. I know that's a lot of money for I mean, anybody. It's a large chunk of money. Um, but if you're coloring full time, it's an investment into yourself and your business. So if you think of like average business and average startup costs, they're gonna be way more than $4,000. Um, granted, that's not the whole cost of the setup, but you know, it's just one element that you need to build up to, uh, to hopefully eventually upgrade to. So you don't start there. You don't start at the $4,000 monitor. You start with whatever you can get your hands on. And as your skills improve, as your clientele continues to grow, then you make that decision when the time comes. Honestly, also for $4,000, like that's not the most expensive monitor. There's HDR monitors that are truly capable of grading and mastering and like Dolby Vision. They're $30,000, some of them $40,000. 4,000 in the grand scheme of things for SDR is not that bad. And I know that's gonna sound ridiculous that 4,000 isn't a lot of money. It is, but like when you put it in the context of business, it's a different story. Next question, how has the new setup been working uh, and what's the specs of the new PC? So a little while ago, I did a video on my channel, which you can find here. I was addressing why I was switching from a very low-end computer um, to an iMac that I thought was pretty specced out and pretty well built. I had a lot of justification for it. I thought it was a pretty good move and it wasn't a bad move, but I'm to the point now in my career as a colorist where 
client expectations, new deadlines, they're getting faster and tighter. I'm having to bounce to multiple projects at the same time. I need something that's gonna run everything I can throw at it, especially when we're doing live sessions, um, client sit-in sessions, because things need to be able to render and play you know, quickly in real time. And so if we need to add certain effects or do noise reduction, really any kind of GPU heavy effects, I need to be able to rely on that system that it's gonna play back um, without having any hiccups. So that's huge. That's one of the reasons I was looking into upgrading to that iMac after about a month, which in the video that I made, I was talking about why I wasn't gonna build a PC because I didn't wanna do all the research. And I think right after that video, I decided like how much research could it really be? So I looked it up and ended up of course, building out my own PC, which is there and it's the colors, the lights are on right now. It's got some RGB in it just because they were the best parts I could find that all fit my budget. Um, you can certainly do a non RGB build and you can turn the lights off whenever you're grading. So they're not always on, but uh, it does kind of look cool in the background. I won't lie. So because there's so many questions in here about your PC specs and Mac versus PC, I'll go ahead and address both of those in one. First, I'm gonna address the specs on this PC. It's not in its finished form. I was planning on getting a 3090, but I built it, you know, like in March, April, which was just the height of the shortage in, in GPUs and uh, CPUs. It does not have the 3090 in it because I could not find one for less than $4,000. It has a 3080, it's an RTX 3080, the gigabyte version, uh, which is overclocked from factory. There was a slight issue with that specific model where it was having some issues with heat sink and it was doing some throttling. This one has not suffered from that because I actually bought it secondhand, super sketch, but it's the best way I could find one. And the guy I bought it from actually put in new thermal pads so that it does a little bit better job of dispersing that heat and yeah, the thermal throttling isn't a problem on this one. So the GPU is a Gigabyte RTX 3080. The processor is an AMD Ryzen 5950X, which is a 16 core, 32 thread processor. And this one in particular, I believe I got it for like $1,000 at the time. They should have been closer to like 800. And I do have it overclocked to about 4.2 gigahertz, but it will turbo turbo to five gigahertz. For the RAM, I'm running 128 gigs of, I believe 3,200 megahertz. Uh, they ran out of 3,600 and I could not find this package or this deal anywhere else. So I got a good deal on it, but 128 gigs of CL 16 or 18, I honestly forgot. But it's it's been more than enough. Um, and honestly with Resolve, the more RAM you give it, the more it's gonna use. It's not gonna use all of that RAM, but it's, it really throttles back. It doesn't like to use it all, but you will see heightened use of your GPU, your CPU and your RAM. Uh, when rendering or doing graphics heavy, graphics intensive processes. So those are the main three elements of any PC builds, your RAM, CPU, and GPU. Uh, for the extra components, I'll probably just drop a list down below because those change so much, it's not that big of a deal. Um, the motherboard too, I mean, it's a pretty standard motherboard. It's just an Asus X570 model. Um, I don't remember the specific model, but you know, X570 is kind of the way to go. You have enough PCIe slots to cram in everything you need because I've also got the Blackmagic Decklink card, which is a must have, especially when running SDI into a calibrated monitor. And then I've also got, um, I think two or three SSD slots. So keep that in mind. Um, definitely look out for multiple SSD slots. That's a huge help. One, just for speed, you can edit directly off of them. You get two or 3000 megabits, megabytes a second of read and write speeds. Um, so you can't really beat that. You, it's a much harder and much more expensive to get that in an external drive. So you can get up to an eight terabyte if you go with Sabrent. They make an eight terabyte internal uh, M.2 SSD. So that covers the, the PC specs. As for PC versus Mac, obviously I prefer Mac. The interface is much better. The amount of times that I have to send stuff from my iPhone to my computer, um, it is a pain right now doing that with it being a Windows machine. If it was iMac or anything Mac, I can just airdrop it or send it to myself, text it to myself. I have all my text message right there. The, the trade-offs you get between a higher spec machine versus the user interface, that's something to think about. But with where I'm at now, the specs I need and the speed and quality of the machine I'm looking for, I was looking at spending either $20,000 on a Mac or four to $5,000 on a PC. And the difference there, that's $15,000 of difference. Before I needed this powerful of a system, um, you know, I was looking at like for a Mac, $3,000 versus the PC version, which would be like $2,000. So that at that point, the price discrepancy was much more manageable and I could justify spending an extra $1,000. But spending an extra $15,000, that's something I'll be working towards in the near future. Um, but for now, the PC has been great. It's run very reliably. I built it myself. I didn't have any problems uh, putting it together. And I mean, everything's been pretty smooth, honestly. There was one hiccup 
Um, the other day we had some files sending back and forth and I don't know if it was just the fact that the DRP, the DaVinci Resolve project, came from a Mac machine and then trying to open it on Windows. It just had some issues and then we had the blue screen, it crashed, um, everything freaked out and then it shut down. But it restarted, pulled it back up and everything was fine. So yeah, overall the reliability can't really complain. Another very common question is either what was the machine or little tablet next to my panel um, and if you know what that is it's the stream deck xl and then the other question was how is it set up so the way i have mine set up really is just the main functions i go to they also have folders within them so you can click one button and it goes into a whole other tab of 24 other buttons it has hotkeys for certain nodes that aren't found on the mini panel so if i need to add a serial before or an outside node i can click just outside or serial and then it will add those nodes it will speed up your workflow immensely next question is which panel do you recommend for beginners if you're in Resolve, which I'm assuming most of you are, I recommend the micro panel. Obviously, it's the one it's built for Resolve and it's excellent. It's the first panel I bought. It's a lot better than the Tangent Ripple, which I think is three or four hundred dollars. When you think about it being an investment, that thousand dollars is nothing. Factor that in to the profitability of you working a few extra hours after your day job every night especially if you can eventually move full-time into color, um, that $1,000 pays for itself real quick. Um, same thing with the masterclass. That investment, that $1,000 investment, I buy classes all the time. I just bought a new course today because I'm still learning and I want to learn as much as I can. But that $1,000, I mean, you get back as much as you put in. So if you want to, one, just improve your filmmaking skills, if you wanna improve your coloring skills, you get to take the knowledge that you've learned from that course, all that material, and build up your own skills to make yourself more profitable and marketable to people that are willing to hire you. Then you turn that $1,000 investment or $2,000 of investment into an additional 20, 30, 40, 100, $200,000 a year. So yeah, it's worth $1,000. I definitely recommend picking one up. Next question is, do you connect from desktop Thunderbolt 3 to IO box? and then HDMI to monitor. I used to whenever I was on Mac and I was using the LG C8 as my reference monitor. I used the Blackmagic, actually I have it right here, one sec. Yeah, this thing right here. There's like no material on YouTube on this thing. So this is it. This is the Blackmagic Ultra Studio Monitor 3G. It's the updated version of the prior one they had. I can't exactly remember what it's called. It takes Thunderbolt out of your PC or Mac and it does have to be Thunderbolt. They stress that like a, a whole lot when, they're, when you're reading the product manual, it's got to be Thunderbolt. And then it outputs HDMI or SDI. From there, you can take this HDMI signal or the SDI signal, run it into your monitor. Uh, and then you know you're getting a true signal that's not being uh, interpreted or affected by your computer's internal graphics. So this was super handy at the time. Now I'm using the deck link, which is just, it plugs straight into a PCIe slot and then does HDMI or display port. No, I think it's just HDMI or SDI. But it outputs SDI and HDMI, and I have the SDI running right into my monitor. Um, but this essentially does the same thing in terms of making sure you're getting the truest signal. So if you're running any professional setup or you're doing work for clients, that's when I would recommend this being a must. I think this one's $130 on B&H, and the Decklink card, if you're running on PC, is I think right under 100, like 95 bucks. So there's really just no questions asked. You gotta have one of these. But yes, to answer the question, I did used to run Thunderbolt, uh, then HDMI out. Now it's it would have been Thunderbolt to SDI if I was still on Mac, but because I'm PC, it's more of PCIe to SDI into the monitor. Next question, this is a really good question, is how to render uh, in ProRes on Windows version of DaVinci? That's a great question. Resolve in Windows does not allow you to render in ProRes, so what you need to do is render in DNX, which is sort of the Windows variant of ProRes, and then you can take that into Adobe Media Encoder and transcode it that way. There are other options if you don't have Adobe Suite, but I do and I recommend using it. Um, it's worth the money and you have access to Photoshop and After Effects, all these other tools. So if you can get Adobe Suite, I recommend it, and then just export DNX in DaVinci and then transcode it to ProRes in Adobe Media Encoder. Another question I see every day and all throughout these Q&A sessions here um, is which monitors do you recommend in different price ranges? That's tougher to answer, but it is fully answered in the masterclass. There's three separate videos, I believe, that break down based on your budget, which monitors to buy, which computers to buy from the ground up, like storage, cables, everything, even desks and, and chairs. Um, so it's a full breakdown on your studio setup, paint on the walls, like everything when you're building a color suite has to be factored in. So that's a really in-depth question. And for that answer, I would recommend you check out the masterclass. And as I mentioned, from August 11th to August 18th, we're running a huge discount, 35% off on the masterclass. So go check that out and hopefully I'll see you in the Facebook group and we can chat more about which monitor you decided to go with. Uh, which software is best for color grading? Obviously my answer is gonna be Resolve. Um, there's also Base Light and Luster that are two other industry standard softwares. But by far, Resolve is not only the most user-friendly, 
Um, it's also going to be the most affordable and most widely used among all studios. This one I haven't gotten a lot is what speakers are those? So these are Harman Kardon sound sticks. I think this is the second or third generation and I used to be obsessed with them because a friend of mine had them and I thought they were the coolest thing in the world. And then I forgot about them for five years and then I got to college and I was like, hey, those would be fun to get. So I got those speakers and I mean, they have not let me down. They do put out a lot of sound. The two that you see on the desk are like the tweeters. Um, they actually have I think four tweeters like stacked on top of each other. And then there's a sub down beneath, which is there. That looks like a jellyfish. And uh, the sub is a down firing four inch sub. So it sounds pretty good overall. And if you have downstairs neighbors, they will hate you. So keep that in mind. Uh, second to last one we're gonna hit here is not a question, just that cable management is a one. I appreciate that. It's actually not, it's just hidden very well, which I guess that's kind of the point of cable management, but um, it could be better. It's not bad, but I will try and improve on that. But let me know if you guys want to see more content like this, like the hardware related stuff. I love talking about it and hopefully you guys enjoy this content. So let me know if you do. I know it's a step in a different direction here on the channel, but you know, if you guys like it, we're totally down to make more of it. So let us know. And then lastly, uh, what is my next purchase for the studio? That's a fun one. I'm not sure I have like one, I need a new chair bad because this one is super squeaky. We don't appreciate the things that we have. For whatever reason, which kills me in tutorials and it's not the most supportive. I think we're spoiled. And I don't know why I spend so many hours a day sitting at this chair and I won't buy a new chair. I'm like really stubborn about that kind of stuff. I only buy things like when I need them. I like this chair. Or I really want them. So I have to convince myself that I want a new chair to buy one. Offers good support, ergonomically correct. So I'll get to that whenever the time comes. Um, that's gonna be the next upgrade for me. Other than that, I really feel like I might even now need a bigger desk. I just bought a bigger one, but it's still not deep enough. So I'm gonna have to you know, do some problem solving there. Other than that, I might get another Stream Deck XL just cause they're so good and I can add more functionality to the other one. And from there on out, probably just new storage solutions cause I'm going through so much footage. Um, so I'd rather than continuing to buy more backup RAID drives, I'd rather just set up a NAS and have that NAS server for everything. So that's it. Let me go ahead and give you guys a full rundown of highlighting the desk and all of its components, everything that's important. There's some small things I'll skip over, but for the most part, let's go ahead and do a full desk breakdown. So starting on the left side, we have the Flanders DM240, which I mentioned, it's an excellent grading monitor. And if you're stepping into the professional world, you really can't go wrong with this one here. Next up, we have a Stream Deck XL, which is mapped out to all the things that I needed to do, all the buttons that aren't featured in the mini panel, which is that big console that you see in the center. And I think most of you here probably know what the mini panel does. It gives me all the functionality I need to grade and resolve. Next up, I have a Logitech gaming keyboard. No reason that it's gaming other than the fact that it's semi-mechanical and it offers a bunch of functionality in terms of the macros that you can add to it. And the mouse is also from Logitech, but honestly, I have a bit of a mouse and keyboard addiction. So I kind of swap through those as I get bored with one of them. Next up is the two monitors you see here. That's the two GUI monitors, and those are just simple 27 inch LG 4K monitors. They're great monitors for your user interface, but they also can be pretty solid options if you're looking for an entry level grading monitor. They can be calibrated and they do look really good. Next up are the sound sticks I was telling you about from Harman Kardon. Beautiful sound quality, and I'm a big fan. I've been using them for about two and a half years, maybe three years now, and they are just phenomenal. Then we have the PC, as I mentioned, it's spec'd out with a 5950X from AMD, 128 gigs of Trident Z Neo memory and then an RTX 3080. If you'd like to hear more about the PC build, please let me know in the comments below and I'll do a little bit more in-depth breakdown of all the components here. And then I also have a floating arm for the mic that I use when I'm recording tutorials. That again is the Audio-Technica AT2035 and that is running into an M-Audio Duo. So that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this little detour. Don't forget we also have a special on the Freelance Colorist Masterclass. From August 11th to August 18th, you can join for 35% off. Huge discount, so don't miss out there. Now you guys know the drill. If you're enjoying the content, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel for more awesome content, and I will see you in the next one.